closer now? <laughs> Minus the buildings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Eritrea was divided into four regions. Like, you know, there was no region, like any other African country. There was no a country in Africa. This just guest was uh, explaining about that one. But there was a lot of kingdoms. The same in Eritrea, there was a Finju kingdom on the lowland area. Uh, there was uh, the Hergibo uh, in the Masawa area, there was another kingdom. Nice. There was Denakil on the Asad area. And in the highlands, uh, there was uh, Baharnubus, which is uh, uh, there was a king in the middle. They were not fighting against each other, but it was not, they, they don't have enough resources and cooperation to resist invaders at that time. So there was an entity in different parts of Eritrea. It was not a unified country as we know right now. So the lowland was called Fungi. When I was, I was doing my research today, uh, I know about this tribe called Fungi, which comes from the Egyptian area all the way to Sudan, and it was, they were pushing to the Eritrean lowland on the Barka area. And there was uh, the central highland, I, I mean on the Barka area, there was on the other side, Beja tribe, and the Denakil were on the Asad area, as well as the Masawa was the night uh, of Masawa. Uh, so the Turkish <coughs> rule starts in 1517 in Eritrea and it ends in 1557 uh, was captured the uh, Dwarba and it stays until 1860, almost for almost 300 years or uh, 300 years in Eritrea. So after Turkey, who came after Turkey? I forgot. <laughs> who came after Turkey? Egyptians. Yes, the Egyptians. So in uh, Egyptians, they came to uh, Eritrea. It was not their first time to come to Eritrea after Turks. They were fighting on the lowland area. When uh, Egypt was declaring uh, Sudan like its province in 1820, they start from Kassala area, they were starting to penetrate to uh, the Barka area, and there was a big resistance with, uh, by, against the Beja tribe in Barka as well as uh, the Egyptians when they come. But officially, they were leasing Masawa from, uh, from the Turks because the Turk Empire started to decline. How does an empire decline? How, what happened? Why do they left Eritrea, by the way, Turks? Resistance. Exactly, resistance. There was a big internal resistance in Europe, in all their uh, colonizing people. So with the resistance, they couldn't financially, militarily, well, they couldn't uh, afford it in all aspects they start to decline. So they have to withdraw to one concentrated area. So th th that's why the Ottoman Empire shrinks and it becomes a modern Turkey as we know. So they list Masawa to the Egyptians. The Egyp Egyptians start to rule uh, Eritrea, especially the Red Sea area. Always Red Sea is the most, it is a time bomb. <laughs> so Red Sea is very dangerous, that's why we need to be conscious always about the Red Sea. So they start to rule uh, Eritrea from the Red Sea, but they didn't stop there. They start to expand their rule, the same like any other empires. So they, they start all the way down to the, there was a war, the war of Wounded, I guess uh, the older people they know, or they know that. And there was a war of Gura. The war of Wundat and Gura was a war by Eritreans against Egyptians. And if we see where Wundat and Gura are, deep, deep in the highlands. So they came all the way down to the highlands in order to expand their rule. So did all the tribes come together to fight that? No, they don't. They were, they were, all of them were busy fighting against, uh, for example, the Denakis on the Asad area. There was always invasion from the Tigray warlords, as well as from the Ethiopian Abyssinian warlords coming. 
So there was a resistance in that area. The same the Highlanders, they were uh, Tigrayan warlords always comes uh, to Eritrea, which makes them busy fighting uh, to resist their tariff, which is their territory. The same with the, the Beja tribe in the lowland. Egypt, as I say, Egypt was not the first comer to, uh, to the Masawa area when the Turks left. It was there because in 1820, Sudan was declared, it was con considered as one of the provinces of Egypt. So Egypt was just coming on the lowland to expand from Kassana all the way, like Baron to Tessa, in those lowland area. It was trying to capture those places. So, so there was resistance in every corner of Eritrea. So there was no uh, a coercion force uh, to resist. Uh, the only thing I, I forgot in my presentation is, what is the legacy of Turks in Eritrea? Islam? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of legacy, which is a positive legacy. There is no positive legacy of <laughs> colonizers, but there is, what, what is the legacy of Turks? Um, I would guess Islam. Yeah, they spread Islam, excellent, yeah. Architecture, some of their architecture. Excellent, architecture, there are beautiful architecture in uh, Masao. And in Asad, uh, in Karen, there are some uh, Turks, uh, architectures out there. Uh, but there is, do you know about uh, Alexander Pushkin? Who knows about Alexander Pushkin? Yeah. Alexander Pushkin is, you know, he's considered as a, the father of the literature of modern Russia, which is, you know, in, uh, but do you know the story about Alexander Pushkin? Uh, if, you, if you get a chance to look at uh, uh, Isaiah's blog in al Lanaki or <coughs> even in Dahai, you can find it, which is uh, Isaiah's blog. There was a rumor, but Isaiah's now he confirmed it, that Alexander Pushkin is the grandson of Ibrahim Hannibal. Ibrahim Hannibal was, when Turks came down to Eritrea, which is to the Dwarwa area, there is always, of course, history always, there is, uh, there is no 100%, uh, you can't say this is the history of Alexander Pushkin. But they took a small kid. In my research, I found out that his father was the ruler of one of the highlands in Eritrea. So when he lost the war, of course, they captured that little boy and they took him with them. And either he could be Ibrahim or Abraham. It could be an Islamic name, it could be a uh, Tigrinian name, which is Christian name. So they baptized him as Abraham Hannibal. And this Alexander Pushkin is a descendant of Abraham Hannibal. That's what I, I want to mention. So uh, I want you to do further research about it. But if you go to Isaiah's blog, I don't know if, uh, do you know any, anything about Isaiah's blog? There is a big research. I want you to go to uh, alanalk.com or thehigh.com today and fi find out about this Alexander Pushkin. And the other legacy, if you go to the Dalak Island, when you get a chance, when you go to Eritrea, go to the Dalak Island, and there are 366 dug wells in the island. Those 366 dug wells was used by the Turk soldiers to drink water from the, because it is an island, there is no water, it is like a desert. So what they do is, they dug a lot of hand dug wells. So during the rainy season, they fill up. So they use one well per day for their drinking, cooking, and you know, other stuff. So why do they make it 366? Because we have only 365 days in a year. So what do you think they make it 366? 